You'll want to remember this moment as the last time that you thought the flat earth was stupid. They Hey everybody, welcome back or welcome to our channel if you're new here. My name's Katie and I'm here to make you question everything that you've ever learned. Before we get started with today's video, let me go ahead and give a quick disclaimer so YouTube doesn't take this video down. This was made strictly for entertainment purposes only. This is 100% our, my opinion, it's speculation, none of it should be considered factual. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and say that I'm an actress and I'm practicing my movie lines. Hopefully that's good enough. Now let's get into it. Now, it took me a long time to accept this and even longer to be willing to openly talk about it in public. And as much as I hate labels, I'm officially a flat earther. This is real. It's not a psyop. It's not a distraction. It's not like a bandwagon for people to jump on. This is like a real, plausible, reasonable debate. And I'm gonna explain it to you. Millions of people have compared what we see in experience to what we've been taught. And they've all realized that they don't really align. Once you start looking into this, it becomes like obviously clear that there is no reasonable explanation for them to say that the earth is a ball. Like there's absolutely zero evidence that leads people to speculate that the earth is a ball. Actually, all the evidence points to it being a flat stationary surface that doesn't move. The flat earth theory is actually more than reasonable. Matter of fact, the only reason why people debate that it's round versus flat is because that's what we've been taught our whole lives. Had we have not been taught that information, everybody would assume that the earth is flat and motionless because that's what we experience on a daily basis. We literally ignore our personal experience every day just to justify what we've been taught. We blindly believe something that has never been proven and is pretty much impossible. Because I don't know about you, but I know that when I was taught that the earth was a ball, they told us that, oh, there's some people out there that think that the earth is flat, but they never really gave us logical reasons as to why they think it's flat. They just said that, yeah, that's a debate that you'll hear in your life, but those people are crazy because if it was flat, you'd fall off the edge, right? And they show you pictures like this. When... Like, clearly, that's not a real life thing. But if the Earth was a spinning ball, we would just magically stick to it then? It's crazy. They literally get you to laugh away the explanation of the flat Earth before you are even A, of age to do any, like, reasonable, like, logical, critical thinking about it. And B, they don't give you any facts as to why they laugh it away. They just say, oh, no, it's not real. So then by the time when you get older and you do hear about the flat earth theory, you're just like subconsciously like, oh no, I've already heard about that. I know it's BS. I don't even need to look into it because I was told people believe that, but it's not real. Come on. Upon a closer examination of NASA, you can easily tell that things are not what they seem and that people are being lied to. Now, when you find out that every picture of our earth has came from NASA, that might make you start questioning things because I know a lot of people think that NASA was just responsible for the moon landings or like rocket launches, right? They don't know that every single piece of evidence or photograph or anything that we get of the Earth comes from NASA. And you notice NASA, I'm just saying this, is N-A-S-A, -A, right? And how they like um, start every launch is T minus, right? Because N-A-S-A, -A, they're missing the T in that Satan. Just saying. T minus, T minus. <laughs> Anyways, NASA has not provided us with one real, like, actual, like, click photograph of the Earth. And no matter how hard we try, we just can't seem to find the curve. Not only that, but flight paths make more sense on a flat Earth, as well as emergency flight landings make way more sense on a flat Earth. Like, way more. But on top of all that, pilots up in the airplane would have to dip their nose every four minutes to avoid, like, flying out into outer space, right? Because you're a ball, and if the plane's flying around the ball, they would have to dip, 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 dip to stay around the ball. Otherwise, they're just going to fly out into outer space. Go ask any pilot ever. Look it up. Do research for your own. Ask the pilot, do you dip your nose every four minutes? No. It's not a thing. They don't do it. Okay. 
here, take a look at some of these flight path videos and emergency flight landings, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about, how it makes so much more sense on a flat Earth compared to a round ball Earth. Just check it out. Why is nobody talking about Osaka, Japan to Munich, Germany? Watch this flight. This is going from Japan all the way to Germany. Look at the flight pattern, y'all. Look at this. Now, why is that important? Because on a flat Earth map, it is a completely direct flight from Japan to Germany. Completely flat, straight. However, on the flight pattern, it is doing all the way above Greenland and then coming way back down. This is absolute proof that the Earth is flat. 16 emergency landings. Proving flat earth without a shadow of a doubt, as long as you're not totally blocked up, as long as your pineal gland isn't like massively fluoridated, you know, I mean, then you should at least be able to have some logic here, some common sense, because the fluoride, it gets rid of common sense. That's the problem. So this is a flight that happened that was carrying a Brazilian soccer team, and they went from Sydney to Los Angeles to Rio de Janeiro. And now you would think that maybe you could just fly straight across here, right? You'd just go straight across the bottom to go straight over, but they didn't. They went all the way up to Los Angeles, okay? Weird, weird. If you look at it on this Gleason's map, Gleason's map from the 1800s, you have Sydney to Los Angeles to Rio de Janeiro. It seems a little more practical on this map, doesn't it? Why they would take that route? Like crazy nuts, right? And there's so many examples of this, so many. Our daily observations of the earth are consistent with a flat stationary plane, like period. And most, if not all ancient civilizations knew and understood that the earth was flat. Now, the people of today will tell you that ancient civilizations were ignorant and unaware, yet they accomplished amazing, like, accomplishments and buildings and structures and built these, you know, grand things that we still can't even explain or replicate to this day. But yeah, they were ignorant and unaware. Sure. The truth is, ancient civilizations had real knowledge, and people of today only have an education. And what even is an education? If you like really break it down, what is it? Education is a system that we are all thrown into from a very young age that literally tells you how to think and what to think. It's literally an indoctrination program where they sit you in straight rows, teach you to raise your hand if you have a question, don't speak unless you're spoken to. It's a system that grades your intelligence and worth on a letter system and praises those who can successfully regurgitate the information that they've been fed on a command, like at any command. If you can successfully regurgitate it, great, you're educated. And it's a system whose creator openly admits that he doesn't want a nation of free thinkers. He wants a nation of workers. But yeah, they're probably teaching us the truth. They have no ulterior motives at all. There is a huge difference between being educated and actually intelligent. And just because you believe what you've been told doesn't make it a fact. There's actually been studies done to show that if you repeat a lie enough times, not only will you believe it to be fact, but the people around you who have heard you repeat this lie so many times will also believe it to be fact. But none of that changes the fact that it's a lie. It, like, just because you believe it to be true doesn't make it true. The flat versus spherical Earth is a debate that has been happening for centuries. But with NASA being founded in 1958, the latter part of the 20th century was a win for the spherical Earth. And the average person didn't even question the shape of the Earth anymore. Though the shape of the Earth still had never been proven, NASA claims that they went to the moon and got pictures of the Earth and successfully brainwashed the world when they aired the footage on TV. So the sphere globe just took over and everybody believed it to be factual. But in reality, all it ever was was a theory. It was never proven, ever. NASA never went to the moon. 
They just filmed it in a room and people believed it. You want me to show you an example of why I don't trust NASA? Let me just show you this one real quick. So this was a picture taken from an Apollo moon landing. Yet if you put it into audit editing software, you can see a box pop up around the moon. Anybody who knows anything about computer editing knows that box is there because they edited that in afterwards. This is Photoshop. This is not real. And that is why I don't trust NASA, because they're a bunch of liars. We've all been taught our whole lives that we are on a ball, which is spinning around the sun. So to hear that you might actually be on a flat, motionless plane at the center of the universe with all the celestial bodies spinning around you, just as it appears, it actually comes as a surprise to us, when in reality, it shouldn't. Because your eyes experience it every day. And common sense tells us that the horizon is horizontal and perfectly flat. We all feel motionless. You don't feel or hear yourselves whizzing by at thousands of miles per hour, right? So why does it come as a shock that we're not? No matter how high amateur rockets or balloons have gone up, the horizon always rises to eye level, which would be impossible on a spinning ball Earth. When the horizon rises to the eye of the like the eye level of the observer all the way up, that is only consistent with a flat stationary Earth. Because if you run a ball, the higher up you went, you should not only see the horizon drop, but it should start to curve. Yet no matter how high amateur rockets or anything goes, there's no curve. None. So the heliocentric model says this. It says that the Earth is spinning at a thousand miles per hour, which is then circling around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour. Then the sun and the Earth are spinning around the Milky Way galaxy at 500,000 miles per hour, and the entire Milky Way galaxy is shooting off from the Big Bang at 670 million miles per hour. Yet we feel none of it. Okay, sure. That's almost the speed of light. But we don't feel any of it? Okay. Okay. So there is at least four rip-raging, contradictory motions happening at the same time, yet us humans feel none of it. None of it. Nor can we actually physically measure any of it. You starting to see it now? The flat earth isn't the greatest conspiracy ever. It's just the truth. The earth that we live on is flat and motionless. And the more you look into it, the more you'll find evidence to support this theory. Matter of fact, I've been looking into this for several years and I have not found one piece of evidence that supports the ball theory, not one. Which is why I say it's asinine for them to just assume that it's a ball. They have no proof supporting this. I like strongly encourage you guys to start looking into this. Hell, you can even start looking into it because you try to disprove the flat earth theory, right? Look into it because you think it's a ball and you wanna prove us flat earthers wrong. I'm telling you, the more research you do, the evidence you come across is going to change your opinion. I don't need to, because the Earth truly is flat and stationary. Like, truly. Try as you will, you will only find evidence that supports a flat, motionless Earth. Not one piece of evidence will lead you to conclude that the Earth is a sphere, spinning ball, shooting through the galaxy at all these crazy, like, speed of light speeds. Like, I seriously, I challenge you to find one piece of evidence that supports the ball theory. I would love to hear it. The curve of the Earth is constantly eluding us. So either the Earth is much bigger in circumference than we've always been taught, or the curve just isn't there. Like, there's no other explanation. It's one or the two. Of course, people assume there is a curve because this is what we've been taught our whole lives. But it has never, never been proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Never. Cameras with fisheye lenses, Hollywood movies, or CGI are the closest that we will ever be to seeing true, actual curve. You won't see it in real life. Not even if you get on a plane, look out the window. You're not going to see any curvature. Take a look at this video. It's a video of the longest bridge in the world. You can see it from point A to point B. They got the whole bridge in picture. Why don't you see any curvature? How come when they were creating and building this bridge, they didn't have to account for any curvature of the earth? 
If the Earth is 25,000 miles in circumference, there must exist a curvature drop of 8 inches times the mile when you square the mile. One mile means there should be an 8 inch curvature drop. Two miles, 2 times 2 times 8 is 32, that's 32 inch drop. Three miles would be a 72 inch drop. And this would exponentially continue. Here's the longest bridge in the world, the Danyang Kongchong Grand Bridge in China, 102.4 miles long. There should exist nearly 7,000 feet of curvature drop in that bridge. 7,000 foot curvature drop, do you see it? It ain't there. Look at the horizon, it's flat. It doesn't make sense. Then I know you'll hear um, Bill Nye, the science guy, Bill, Bill. Bill Nye the Liar Guy, more like it. He says, I am now going to make a wild, way out, extraordinary claim. The world is round. So our curvature here, horizon model of science. Watch as ships sail away. They don't disappear all at once. No, first, the bottom will disappear. See, the bottom of the ship is gone. Now we can see midway up, and then the whole thing disappears. Now, ships came back. They didn't fall off a table. So people realized that the world is curved. I mean, it's a big curve, but it's curved. So the process of testing claims, the world is flat, the world is round, is what we call science. Now, if you have a claim that can't be tested, that's what we call pseudoscience. The difference between pseudoscience and regular science is whether or not you can test it. The flat earth, well, that didn't stand up to tests. Ships disappear at the beach, right? You see a ship sail out to the ocean and it disappears because it's going over the curve of the earth. Really? Because if I grab a telescope and zoom in on that boat, I can pull it right back into view. Which shouldn't be possible if it disappears over the curve of the earth. It should be hidden by water and earth. So I shouldn't be able to see it no matter what type of fucking telescope or anything I have. But yet I can because it doesn't disappear over the horizon or curve of the earth. It disappears from your perspective because your eyes can only see so far. Somewhere beyond the sea, somewhere waiting for me, my lover stands on golden sand. Watches the ships that go sailing Somewhere beyond the sea She's there watching for me If I could fly like birds on high Then straight to her arms I'd go sailing It's far Beyond the star, it's near beyond the moon. I know One of the most commonly cited alleged proofs of the globe Earth is the disappearance of ships sailing beyond the horizon, as seen from an observer on shore. Globe Earthers since Aristotle have claimed the reason that ship hulls disappear before their mastheads when sailing away is due to the physical curvature of the Earth obfuscating their view. This simple supposed proof is still cited today by Neil deGrasse Tyson, Michelle Thaler, and other NASA spokespeople, but is easily shown invalid with the use of modern zoom technology. By fixing a good telescope or super zoom camera aimed at the horizon on a clear day, it is possible to bring ships that have completely disappeared beyond the supposed curvature of the Earth fully back into view. The fact of the matter is that the law of perspective on plane surfaces dictates and necessitates this phenomenon. For example, a girl wearing a dress walking away towards the horizon will appear to sink into the Earth the farther away she walks. Her feet will disappear from view first, and the distance between the ground and the bottom of her dress will gradually diminish until after about a half a mile it seems like her dress is touching the ground as she walks on invisible legs. The same happens with cars speeding away. 
The axles gradually get lower, and the wheels vanish, until it appears as if the car is gliding along its body. Such is the case on plane surfaces. The lowest parts of objects receding from a given point of observation necessarily disappear before the highest. It has absolutely nothing to do with the supposed curvature of the earth, and everything to do with the nature of vision. When you look out at the flat horizontal horizon, the ground appears to rise up from your feet to your eye level, and the sky appears to slope down from over your head to your eye level. A row of lamp posts appears to get shorter in the distance, but in reality they are all actually the same height. If you are looking out over a road or railway track, you will also notice the same phenomenon happening left to right. The parallel sides of the road or railway appear to converge at a point on the horizon, but in reality they never actually converge and remain parallel the whole length. This law of perspective is therefore an optical illusion hardwired into the very way we perceive the world. Even without a zoom camera or telescope, it is simple to prove that ships sailing into the horizon are not disappearing beyond the curvature of a globe. Instead of looking straight ahead at the ship disappearing a few miles in the distance, first look to your left where you can see equally far into the distance, and then look to your right where you can see equally far again. In other words, you can see twice as far from left to right as you can see straight in front of you anyway. But for some reason, you think at just half the distance in front of you, ships are already disappearing over the supposed curvature of the earth. This is even more obvious with the use of high-altitude balloons, which can reach heights of over 120,000 feet and can often see for hundreds of miles in all directions. As high as the camera climbs, the horizon rises to eye level, and any ships that seemed to disappear after a few miles are easily viewable again at altitude. Ironically, in this instance, Globe Earth apologists use the exact opposite excuse, and no matter your altitude, will claim you simply aren't high enough to see the mythical curvature of their fantastical ball Earth. In other words, they claim at ground level ships are disappearing beyond the physical curvature of their globe just a few miles away. But at high altitudes, where observers can see for hundreds of miles in all directions, that is somehow not high or far enough to see the curve. In reality, however, when the curvature math is applied for a globe of given proportions, we should be able to easily observe it, even at ground level. Now, water is always level, right? That's just basic physics. We all know that. We know that if water is uncontained or unobstructed, it will flow outwards, finding the easiest course to maintain its own level. Yet the sphere Earth claims that these oceans are huge, hundred-plus mile bodies of water that just magically curve around the ball. It's literally ludicrous. And gravity, don't even get me started on gravity. First of all, gravity was a theory. It was never proven. And I know it's just our imaginary magic friend that holds all the oceans onto the earth and all the people onto the earth, but yet it can, you know, a butterfly can fly against gravity and that doesn't stop it. And it's crazy. We're told that gravity is the only reason that we're here and not like floating out into outer space, right? But gravity is just a theory. It has never been proven. And you can explain away gravity using like simply buoyancy and density. That's all you need, buoyancy and density. If something is more dense than the air, it will stay on the ground. If it's less dense than the air, it'll float, right? It'll go up in the sky. If something is less buoyant than the water around it, it's gonna sink. If something is more buoyant than the water around it, it will float. You don't need gravity. You can explain it with density and buoyancy. That's it. Our density is the reason why we stay on this earth, because we are heavier and more dense than the air around us. Helium is lighter and less dense than the air around it, hence why a helium balloon floats. That's all you need, density and buoyancy. We don't need gravity. There's literally no need for this imaginary magical force of gravity. Don't need it. We can't measure gravity. We can't prove that it's here. It's just a theory. Yet we can measure density and buoyancy. We can prove those are real. Literally, the sphere Earth theory is pseudoscience. There's no way you can prove it. 
So it's like BS science. Like get that pseudoscience out my face. I don't want it. If I can't test it, I can't prove it. I don't want to hear it. It's just a bunch of theories to me. Sorry, but it is. So I know what you're thinking, Katie. Well, if gravity is fake, what holds the oceans to this earth then? Well, that's an easy one. The Antarctic ice wall. Antarctica is not just another continent at the bottom of the earth like we've all been taught. Antarctica is a giant ice wall that enwraps our entire earth holding the waters in. I even shared a video a few videos back on YouTube, TikTok, all of our social media pages about the wall being found in the ocean where they literally swam up to the ice wall all the way at the bottom of the ocean. It goes all the way down. It holds our waters in. Look up Antarctic ice wall. You'll find it. Go back to my previous video and watch this. And you'll see it. I'm telling you. Antarctica is the only country in the entire world where all the countries of the world have agreed not to go to, live on, or train their armies. Literally every country of the world has gotten together and signed what's called the Antarctic Treaty, which basically preserves Antarctica for scientific research purposes only. Nobody can go there to live. Nobody can go there to train their armies. Anything. It's literally off limits. And I know what you're thinking. Well, my cousin, my grandma or me, we took a, a tour down to Antarctica and we saw the penguins. So it's not off limits. I went there myself. Yeah, you're right. You did to a little part of Antarctica about this big, right on the edge where they let you go and view and visit the penguins. You cannot venture off into Antarctica just on your own willy nilly. I want to go check out the whole continent. They will not let you. Like you have to have like signed permission from all the countries that are involved in this Antarctic Treaty to go there further than the little spot where you visit the penguins. There's reason for that. Actually, a bunch of flat earthers got together in 2020 or 20, end of 2019, early of 2020, and they paid for a ship to go out to Antarctica. Um, I think they had gotten permission. I'm not really sure about that, but they were going to take a flat earth cruise ship to the edge of Antarctica and investigate it for themselves and prove once and for all that the earth is flat. And then guess what happened? COVID stopped them. Convenient. Another coincidence. There is literally so much evidence that supports a flat earth. And I could honestly talk about this for hours. There's private videos of like private rockets being launched up into space to see what happens. And as soon as they hit the firmament, they just stop spinning. I'll show you. Watch Watch the video. This is just crazy to me. And like I said, I could talk about this for days. There is so much proof and evidence out there supporting the flat earth. But I really, really encourage you guys to look into it and do your own research because I promise you won't regret it. Like I said, even start it with the thought of I'm going to disprove the flat earth. I'm going to prove all these people wrong. Start there. I'm telling you, the facts and evidence that you come across will change your mind. It will. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. I would love to know if you guys were flat earthers or if maybe I got you questioning things or if you just think this is all crazy, please let me know. And I also wanted to let you guys know that I finally got a mic. I had a mic. I ordered a corded mic and it, I record these videos on my phone. So it was registering. Like when I plugged my mic in, it was registering in his headphones. So it wasn't working. So then I had to get a TRRS adapter to make my phone register it as headphones or as a microphone, not headphones. And uh, that still wasn't working. So now I finally just got a Bluetooth mic because I was over it. So I hope this microphone made a difference. I hope my voice isn't fading in and out like it was in all my previous videos. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks as always for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.